your team is about to sign a new superstar when all of a sudden he gets a failed medical. How does this even happen? Well, this week on Justin's case, we find out all the questions you have on medicals, like how do super fit players fail medicals and more right this way. Hey, welcome back to Justin's case. Let's dive right in and look at some interesting cases of failed medical exams. One of the biggest ever was that of Manchester United and Netherlands superstar Ruud van Nistelrooy. You know, the guy who made Cristiano cry once? Well, the Rude Rude, of course, had a legendary career that saw him join Manchester United in 2001. But did you know he was supposed to join a year earlier? Initially, they said no, because he was still going through an ACL tear. And then the next year, if I remember correctly, once he had healed, then they assessed him and said, OK, you're good to go. That's right. In 2000, Sir Alex Ferguson wanted young Rude to join up with the Red Devils from PSV. But Rude failed his medical exam. He would have been a club record signing at the time. About $25 million. The thing is, Rude hadn't played for a while due to knee issues. And those issues seemed to concern the Manchester United medical team. Of course, Rude went on to join a year later, and he became a club favorite, scoring lots of goals and royally pissed off Patrick Vieira, Martin Keown, and a bunch of Arsenal faithful before moving on to Real Madrid in 2006. But Van Nistelrooy isn't the only player to have a move scuppered over concerns to his joints or ligaments. In fact, many players may have moves pulled over concerns about players' health. Sometimes those concerns might be serious, but other times it may be predicated based on past injuries or just a medical opinion that the player's body profile or another factor could lead to future problems. Let's give you one example here. There's one mysterious example where a player's medical was cited quite regularly in the media reports, though has never had complete verification. In the run-up to the 2018 World Cup, Lyon had a new emerging talent on the way. His name? Nabil Fekir. He was just scoring goal after goal after goal after goal. This guy was ridiculous. And he was arguably the most exciting French prospect not named Mbappe or Dembele. He even had an admirer, maybe a guy you've heard of, named Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> Fekir went to Liverpool at one point. He got photographed in a kit and even did an interview. But then, you want the truth? Even I don't know, I promise you. I did my medical and then they decided not to sign me. At some point, they wanted to have me believe it was because of my knee. But an excuse needed to be found. The medical tests that I did at Clairefontaine were very clear. My knee is perfectly fine and I feel fine. There are no issues at all with my knee. And Bill Fakir, who was trying to move to Liverpool, they did uh, imaging of his knee. And from my understanding, they were uncomfortable with how much wear and tear they were seeing in his knee following ACL. And they were gonna pay a lot of money for him. So for them, from a risk reward perspective, it becomes, you know, is it worth it for us to pay that much for a player who we potentially can only play at a high level for X amount of years? Fikir went on to sign for Real Betis in La Liga. Apparently he passed the medical there. So like who really knows what's going on? So was it a medical that stopped Fikir from signing for Liverpool or not? Who knows? Credit to Nabil, he's gone on and still had a good career. But if you look at kind of how he's trained, he doesn't train as often as other players either. So there is still maybe some long-term concern for him in that regard. The same thing actually happened to Loic Rami, who was on the verge of signing for Liverpool as well. He ended up at Chelsea after a failed medical at Liverpool. What's going on with Liverpool's doctors? But it does beg the question, to different teams and medical staffs look for different things in medicals. I think every club, depending on what level they're at, how many games they're gonna play, the intensity they play at, they each have a different level of acceptable risk that they're willing to take and tolerate. How can one team say, reject this player? Well, another team takes him or her in. There's also differences between medical staff. Some might see one thing one way as more risky, some might say, may see it as less risky, right? And so there's still variance in that as well. But then in general, definitely you're gonna see some of these top level clubs probably be a little bit more risk averse because one, they're probably gonna have to pay more for a player just because a club selling to a top club has to typically pays a premium, right? Knees and ligaments, that's just one piece of the health puzzle though. You wanna see 
if that player has any we call it congenital you know birth defects that might impact kind of um, their ability, not only their ability to play, but also their long-term longevity, right? If you're trying to buy a player for five years, right? You want the player to actually be able to play that potentially long. Some things can show up in, let's say, different ways. And then secondly, those clubs are going to be involved in these really high intensity matches. And so that's another aspect. Like for example, in the Premier League, the data shows players are involved in more quantity of high intensity runs. So there is more demand on players. So if you have a player coming into that league who's not used to it, which you already know might create some injury risk, and now you're seeing some stuff on the physical and you're thinking, huh, you know, if, if we expand this out over two to three years, is this a player we can really rely on? Or is this a player we want to pay X amount for when we could go and use that on someone else who may not be quite as good, but they might be more available. And these things may not just threaten a player's season, but it could threaten their life. Lilian Touram is a legendary French defender. He has the most caps in French history, actually. Though Hugo Lloris will probably break that record by like next year. Touram had a legendary career at Monaco, Parma, Juventus, and Barcelona. And he was all set up to end it in Paris with PSG. But then, guess what happened? Failed medical. Yes, Turham had a heart issue that appeared. He was already in his mid-30s at that point, so he just decided to call it a career rather than risk continuing and perhaps potentially dying on the pitch. And this has actually happened a few tragic times in football history. You may remember Marc Vivian Faux. Earlier this season, Sergio Aguero had a heart issue detected. He had an arrhythmia first when he was 16 years old. And so he's this is something he's had before, and it may be something now that's evolved to the point where they're not comfortable with him playing more, whether it's you know, due to age, whether it's due to all these demands he's put on his body as well. The question is, how does a player go his whole career with this issue only being detected later on in life? Kingsley Coman had an arrhythmia they did an ablation on it to, to help get rid of it, and he's been fine since. I know it's always scary to hear that word, but it's not really that uncommon for players to have some you know, heart uh, issue. If these top level athletes are failing medicals, what does that say for those of us who sit around playing FIFA and eating potato chips and never actually doing any exercise? Not me. I mean, maybe y'all, I don't know. I'm, that's not me. From my understanding, I mean, there's always kind of reading more and more diagnostics on kind of on what to look for and how to potentially treat it. I think the big thing here that we're seeing is better and better pre-screening of it when you're younger, right? If you can recognize it younger, then you can treat it quicker, right? And so that's really the key thing in these cases is not just looking for it when you already see a symptom, it's making sure every athlete goes through this testing from the, from the point that they're 12, 13, 14 years old, where these things might develop. All right, everybody, listen up. Before we go, if you wanna know more about the medical side of the game, like, for example, how does Ronaldo jump so damn high? You can check out our last Justin's Case episode. Go ahead, click it. All right, all right, that is my case for this week. Please don't forget to like the video if you were vibing with it. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to help us out a bit. And of course, leave a comment if you have some thoughts. Yeah, I read your comment. I do. The ones that are nice or positive are always appreciated. The ones that share your non-discriminatory opinions, also appreciated. Cool. Appreciate those. Anyway, have a great week and we'll be back next week for more Justin's Case.